So I'm Amanda. Um, I've been in the beer industry for about eight and a half years now. Um, I am the director of quality control here at Four Noses. Um, and I run the quality program for Four Noses, Odd 13, and Wild Provisions, which are all of our brands. Very cool, very cool. Can you share with us then your journey into the craft beer industry? What inspired you to become the director of quality at yeah, Four Noses? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not a path that I ever thought I would <laughs> <No>? be on. <laughs> um, I, since the time I was like eight, I was like, I'm gonna be an orthopedic surgeon. Wow. This is my goal in life. Yeah. Um, I had a big family history. My dad's had a bunch of shoulder surgeries. I was a dancer growing up, so I had a bunch of hip surgeries, did a lot Man. of physical <laughs> therapy. So I was like, this is, I think, what I want to do with my life. Okay. Um, so I was pre-med in college, got my degree in biochemistry. Uh, when I was my first year out of school, I decided to work at an orthopedic office just to, you know, get some inspiration and some experience okay. to apply to medical school um, and after being there for a little while I was like this isn't what I thought it was this isn't my jam okay just not not the right life path for me okay and I don't really know what to do because like I said I wanted to do that since I was eight yeah so it's kind of tripping around for a while and I think it was my mom and dad who were like well you like beer um, I went to school of mines in Golden so oh. Awesome. Course is right in the backyard. Yeah, we spent yeah. a lot of time there sure. in college. Uh, my senior year of college is when a lot of the craft breweries up there were opening up, like sure. Cannonball, Mountain Toad. Sure. So I've just always enjoyed it, and yeah. I like the science and the chemistry behind it. Oh my god! Um, and it's basically just biochemistry. So they were like, yeah. "You're pretty well suited for that." Just biochemistry. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna become a brewer. That seems awesome. I'm gonna sure. do that." Yeah. So. I basically just started cold calling breweries in the area and okay. said, hey, I want to get into this. I don't really know how. Yeah. Um, can I volunteer? Yeah. What, where do I start? Mm -hmm. um, and I had a really great professor in college who was part owner in a brewery, and he gave me okay. the great advice of, like, start wherever you can. It's a hard industry to get into, especially if you have no experience. Right. So, like... Coming out of engineering school, you're probably going to want this, you know, fancy engineering job or fancy scientist job, but just start where you can sure. and you'll get where you're supposed to be. And that was the best advice I could have gotten. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I got an email back from on 13. Um, the head brewer at the time there, Eric Larkin, who owns Cohesion, yep. he followed a very similar path to what I did. Okay. And so I think he kind of felt a kinship sure. and so he was like sure we'll do an interview so I started awesome. working there in packaging um, and still my goal was to become a brewer so I worked in packaging and then I worked in cellar and then I did become a brewer okay. and after I'd been brewing for about a year we had a really bad um, wild yeast contamination it was mm -hmm. causing cans to explode um, it was, yeah it was, it was not great yeah <laughs> and they were like hey Amanda you know science, <laughs> you do biochemistry, right? Science person, um, science. Yeah. Here's a budget, do something, figure out why this is happening, wow. make it stop, wow. and make sure it never happens again. So I kind of stumbled into the beer science. Sure. At that point, breweries this size, smaller than like, you know, Avery, New Belgium, didn't really have labs. Sure. Because it's costly to get into, it's an investment. Um, so I built up the quality program in the lab at Odd 13, and then I left Odd 13 in January of 2020 to basically come do the same thing at Four Noses. Wow. Um, I moved over to Four Noses just because I was always in love with the beer. My husband and I yeah. have always lived right down the street, so sure. we came, I think, like the first month we opened. Sure. And I just love the innovation and the variety. We were just about to open Wild Provisions. Right. So... I made the leap over, and then a year or so later, we acquired Odd 13. Yeah, so it's right. It's great full circle. No kidding. Um, but over the last four years, I've kind of built this program from just very basic contamination testing sure. all the way up to what we have here. And we just very moved cool. into this facility in October. Right. So we have this new beautiful lab and sensory room awesome. that I got to design and it's now my home. Oh my God, that's such yeah. a good origin yeah. story. I love that. I think it's a great transition. Walk us through then the science behind your program. Absolutely. How does it ensure the quality of the beer? Awesome. Yeah, I'll start over here because yeah. this is kind of where I start my day to day usually. 
Um, okay. So I would say this part of the lab is what I would call the micro side. Sure. So this is where we're doing microbiology primarily to make sure there's no contaminants in the beer. And mostly what we do is genetic testing called PCR. Okay. Um, a lot of people learned what PCR was during COVID because that's how they were determining if you had COVID. Um, but basically our PCR machine, which is right over here, um, is looking for beer specific spoilers. Okay. So things like lactobacillus and pediococcus, um, different types of brett, and then the diastaticus, sure. which is the beer exploding. Yep. East. Yep. So we're taking samples during fermentation and then once products are packaged, we hold them here and we test them before we either, you know, move on to dry hop or fruiting or before we send them out sure. to our distributors just to make sure that everything's clear of contamination. Sure. Um, we also do some plating like on the little petri dishes. That way we can just kind of differentiate our yeast, um, look at any other potential spoilers. It's just another way to like screen and cast a wide net for everything. Sure. Pictures of it. So this oh, is cool. a plate that's showing um, not necessarily anything bad. This is one of our yeast strains. Okay. So this is something that should be in the beer. Um, oh. But if there was a different yeast, um, like this one versus this one look different, yeah. that's showing two different yeasts in there. So we can tell, like, if we are making a lager and we put it on here, I can see what the lager versus the ale yeast look like, and I can sure. determine, like, if they got cross-contaminated in any way. Sure. Um, there's different media for different things. Sure. Kind of to screen the process. So this side is more of our chemical side. This is where we're starting to build out now that we've got the micro pretty well established. Sure, sure. Um, what we can do over here is cell counting. So we can test um, cell counts during fermentation and once we harvest yeast, just to make sure that they have enough to be pitched into another beer. Sure. Um, we can also do UV vis spectrophotometry. Phot um, <laughs> we can look at water chemistry. We can look at IBUs. Sure. We can oh look at uh, diacetyl, which sure. we check mostly for our lagers. Sure. Um, and then this is just an autoclave, so we sterilize everything mostly for our micro side. Sure. That all makes sense. How cool. Super cool. All yeah. Right. And then this Travel? is our sensory okay. side. So what's really cool about this is we built it out so that we can do blind tasting. So sensory panelists come in, I tell them which door to go to, I prep their samples here, and then I send them through. Um, that's, oh, that's why I was yelling at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got <laughs> it. Is that like your favorite part when you design the room? Yes. I feel like I would have been yeah. like secretive, like, I love these tiny doors. Oh right? yeah, I was so excited about it. And we have these little trays that we use to pass sure. all the samples yeah. through. It's You're really like, put in like French fries. And oh my like, gosh, I should. <laughs> so we'll um, be like, oh, the best day of century mm -hmm. ever. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> they get snacks afterwards and they're very excited about like all the hot Cheetos and stuff. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah, they like the spicy packs, like hot Funyuns, anything I can find that's spicy, they're into. Um, but yeah, sen so sensory side, um, we have all of our back of house staff trained on sensory. Okay. So on an average week, we have between 20 and 25 people coming to sensory panel. Okay. Um, and they're pretty much tasting the beers that were packaged the week before. And they're kind of determining if they're okay to send out. And then based on the beer, if it's a core beer, they're trying to decide how true to brand it is. So like if it's wow. about damn time, they're saying on a scale of one to 10, how true to the overall brand okay. is it? Sure. And if it's a new beer, they're basically creating a brand description for it. They're describing it. Okay. And then once the beer goes through panel five times, we have enough data to build a description. Sure. And then that one moves over to true to brand. Oh um, I'll gosh. also throw like old beer on so we can check shelf life, stuff like that. So that's the reason we like to have it behind these doors so that they don't know, you know, if it's an old about damn time sure. or if it's something, if I'm tricking them sure. in any way. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, not in this fun room, but <laughs> front of house, uh, every one of the four tap rooms, all of the bartenders are trained on sensory and they do two about two to three draft lines per shift okay so we get a ton of data from that especially on like shelf life and sure. aging yeah. and they're really good they're like the first line of defense if any if a keg yeah. oxidized yeah. or if a beer yeah. isn't tasting right wow. they'll send out a message and wow. that kind of alerts us and we can fix the problem sure which is awesome sure. 
Oh my gosh, like, so when you're like, of course, like smaller breweries wouldn't do it because it's more expensive. I'm like, oh sure, like from a very basic level, I get that. And just knowing what we know going through the Cicerone training, and I'm like, this is so great. Like, how do you get quality, right? I mean, yeah. the meaning is in the name, but this is how you make sure things are consistent. And especially if they're flagship or you can catch it in the back or your first line of defense, right? Or things yeah. are going wrong on the tap line. Does somebody forget to clean something or what yeah. went wrong, right? Yeah, and that's I happened. love that so much, right? Like, that's yeah. how you stay on top and that is how you go. And that is so cool. Yeah, and really, like, there is equipment that, sure. of course, you need to invest in, but... I've always been taught and I've always been a big proponent that like just having a quality mindset doesn't cost anything and it's something that a lot of smaller breweries can start with like tracking data having all of that so that you can go back I would say probably 75% of what I do is just managing or analyzing data in some way Um, and that's what's cool about sensory is like it is helpful to train on off flavors and, you know, buying a kit can be expensive. Yep. Um, but you can also make up a lot of those off flavors with stuff you can find at the grocery store. Mm. So sensory, and if you're just tasting your beers to make sure that they are good to go, sensory is pretty much free. And okay. it gives us as much, if not more data than anywhere else in the sure. brewery. Is there any, and we kind of asked you this, but are there any particular beer styles that are maybe more difficult than others to experiment with? I would say, in terms of making beer, I think lagers mm. are probably the most difficult. Okay. Um, just because there's the nothing there. there to hide. Sure. Bye. So you have to be really good. Okay. To make good lagers, because you know there's not, not that it's not hard to make a good IPA or a good fruited sour, but there's other flavors that are coming up there. Sure. But for lagers, there's nothing there. So it's what you're doing, how you're building the grain, how you're doing the water profile, your yeast strain, how you manage that. I think if a brewery can make a really good lager, then you know they're really good brewers. So that's the basics, right? That's the foundation yeah. of anything else you're yeah. going to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then other than that, I think fruited beers okay. are personally my favorite yeah. to play with just because every single one of them is different. Um, so we have to do dosing trials. We have to taste through different rates sure. to see what we like. Okay. Um, so for example, we have a fruited um, citrus IPA that's coming out in a couple weeks. And then we have a fruited West Coast pale ale that's coming out yes. for Women's Day. Awesome. And we had to decide what fruit and how much we wanted to put it in them mm-hmm. this week. So we got to dose them and taste them and it's fun to just play with. Sure. And every time it's different. So you could use the same fruit three different times, but based on the beer or yeah. what other fruits in there, it'll be different. Or how what form it came in. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah, puree versus juice versus concentrate, all sure. of that. Wow, that's super cool. What about um, more exciting? That would be the fruit? Then? I would say that yeah. would be more okay. exciting, yeah. Okay. For sure. That makes sense to me. Um, so what is then like the most rewarding uh, about running the sensory program and any tips that you want to give another brewery outside of those maybe like starting small, some uh, items that you can grab yeah. from the store uh, to start maybe implementing some back best practices on their own. I think the most rewarding part is just seeing everyone develop their confidence in sensory. Sure. That's really fun, especially when we have people who have never really been in the brewing industry before. Yep. And they come in and they start working here and they go through sensory training and they're really intimidated and they're like, I've never done this. And I said, well, you drink beer, right? Like, that's how you start. Just start by drinking beer and maybe think about it a little bit more than you normally would if you're like having a beer at a bar with your friends. Sure. (laughs) And I think it's really cool to teach. Like it's, it's that perfect combination of, for me, like the anatomy and the science that I grew up loving and I'm interested in. And then this beer science. And it truly is the only way for us to mimic or to learn what it's going to be like for a customer to drink a beer. Sure. Like we have, so many instruments that can tell us IBUs, ABVs, the yeast, but like you can't combine that to what it's going to be like when someone's sitting at the bar. Sure. So I think just putting all of our beers through sensory and seeing people be like, oh, I got this off flavor in this or, oh, this batch is really awesome. I'm really proud of what we're doing. Yeah. That's my favorite. 
Very cool. And, and I guess, yeah, such a great second answer. part of that question, um, what people can do besides getting, you know, easy ingredients to start is just try everything. Yeah. When I'm doing sensory training, we tell people, like, next time you're at the grocery store, buy a fruit you've never had or pick up a spice off the shelf that you've never tried and just look at it okay. and explore all of it, you know, like maybe you've never really looked at like a mandarin orange or a tangelo or sure. a dragon fruit yeah. um, or you don't know what coriander is, stuff like yeah. that, like starting in easy approachable ways yeah. just to expand your knowledge. I love that. Because experience basic. is, I say it's more brain power than nose power. Okay. Because you can smell so many things, but you may not know what you're smelling. Right. So you need to make those connections. Sure. And the more you experience, whether that's different breweries, different beers, different spirits, sure. or fruit, vegetables, that sort of stuff, yeah. that helps you build that whole world. Wow. Absolutely. That is amazing advice. I love that so much. Um, oh, we're kind of already here. But uh, as a woman in the field that's traditionally male-dominated, what changes have you seen in terms of diversity and representation in the craft beer industry? I think it's becoming more approachable for women to yeah, come into this I'd industry. Agree. I'd agree. Um, it's fun to look around and see in production that we have not quite 50-50, but we're getting close. Yeah. We're more than most yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. just walk in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've been very fortunate that like when I worked at Odd 13, it was about 50-50 women in production to men okay. so I've been pretty fortunate that I've had haven't had to deal with some of the um, issues that other women have in terms of the workplace I've always felt very supported both awesome. at Odd 13 and here um, but it was a boys club for a while and yeah. I think just social media and people seeing other people working in the industry yep. has really helped this newer younger generation of brewing industry people just feel less intimidated to come in. Sure, sure. I, th I think, and, and a lot of programs too, right? Not yeah. just social media. I, yeah. I think that's a good spot to jump to that. Uh, so groups uh, and or organizations that you're part of that maybe other women could join for inspiration, guidance, support outside of jumping right in, outside of just social media, outside of cold calling? Like yeah. what has been developed that they could get into? Yeah, I think um, from a more technical side, the Master Brewers Association of the Americas is really awesome, oh. um, especially in our Rocky Mountain district. Okay. It's a very wonderful community. It's more focused on like the technical side of brewing, like ingredients, the processes, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but they're a really awesome resource. I'm also a little biased because I'm on the board, okay. but um, <laughs> it's a great group. There's okay. a lot of really good networking and a lot of education that comes with that. Okay. Um, for example, we have a meeting um, in a couple weeks and I'm doing a presentation with some of our board members about how to grow a lab and a pro quality program. Okay. So a lot of education there, a lot of excellent contacts for like, sure. hey, can you help me with this thing or do you know someone at this brewery? I'd really like to you know, put my name in, yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, along those same lines also is the American Society of Brewing Chemists. Okay. That was an excellent support for me from the technical side because okay. there weren't a lot of breweries doing what we were doing to start. And even still, they're making sure that what we're doing is accurate and validated and it's a great way to pick other scientific minds sure. in the industry. Love it. I yeah. love it. I would have been like, so if I was specifically looking for science, is that where I would go? But I, I feel like you nailed it on the yeah, head absolutely. there. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and I think it goes without saying, don't forget to just get out there and say hi and yeah, get to a new brewery or yeah. wherever, even probably at your favorite liquor store, right? A, a lot of those people. Is it cool for go? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a great community, and I always find that people are so welcoming and so eager to share their knowledge. They really are. The brewing industry is one of the only industries I've ever seen where people will share recipes. They'll yeah. share, you know, anything. And it's really fascinating. It's very collaborative. Um, and it is kind of a pretty small community. Even though yeah. there's a ton of breweries in Colorado, a lot of people, you know, move around between breweries and everyone really wants to support each other. And sure. I think that's really awesome. Um, it's cool to see there's a lot of women 
in science yeah. in the brewing industry in our area. Sure. Um, two people that are always so helpful to me are uh, Nicole Balistrieri. She was at Inland Island and she's moving okay. to Prost to okay. manage their yeast. So nice. she's always been so helpful with yeast crop and any questions I have. Sure. Um, and then Shay Holdaway up at Upslope, she's the lab manager there. Yeah, And okay. she has given me so much information on how to build out a lab because their lab is, you know, wonderful. Yep. And we're, we just got the same new PCR system as them. So she's like, come up anytime and I'll help yes. you with whatever you need. So just having awesome. that group of women that can support each other and answer questions and all of that. I love that. Uh, what about a most influential female then in your life, beer or not beer related? Yeah. That's influenced you. I would say probably my mom. Awesome. I know that's probably like a little bit of a tacky answer, that. but <laughs> it's, gotta be the mom. Yeah. it's always my mom. My mom and I are best friends awesome. and she's just the most wonderful, kindest, welcoming, supportive woman. Um, and it's been really fun in the last few years to see her. She's retired and it's been fun to see her really like find her passion sure. and kind of go head first into it and not be scared of you know, am I going to be successful? What do other people think of it? Okay. Um, and she's very open about, you know, her journey and she loves to bring her family and loved ones along on her journey with her. Oh my God. And that kind of encourages me to do the same. Sure. And she doesn't really like beer, but she's always so supportive and she'll always try a little sip of everything. And she's, loves to brag about like when I make beers like when it's my oh, recipe yeah. or whenever we come in she points out the lab and says that's my daughter's chemistry lab that's so cool yeah she's awesome is she more of a wine drinker does she drink she's at all she's not really much yeah, of a drinker fair. no yeah yeah that's right. uh are you an only child no I have no. a younger sister you do have a younger yeah. sister awesome very cool do you have a favorite brewery story could be anything in the lab back here wherever yeah, I think one of my favorite brewery stories actually was kind of recently. It was when we came into this space. Okay. So we had had a lease on this space for almost two years before we were able to do anything. Okay. And we finally got, you know, we were working on construction, but we finally got approval to open the tap room. Okay. And we got that on a Wednesday. And we said, we're going to try to open the tap room on Friday. Oh, my god! So it was kind of like, everyone stop what you're doing. We weren't brewing at the time because we were moving everything. Sure. So it was like, everyone stop what you're doing. We got to get this tap room ready. So it was like building tables, building chairs, hanging light fixtures and posters and cleaning and sure. installing um, the tap handles. And sure. it was just so fun because we're not always all in the same place at the same time. Yep. So it was fun to just have everyone together, like eating pizza and yeah. jamming out to music yeah. and like setting this place up. And by Friday afternoon, we were all just like dead, so dead. <laughs> but we like all took a beer shot to celebrate. Awesome. And we were like, we did this. It was two years in the making. That's awesome. And now we're here. And, and so it was just like such a positive start to being in this space that it was it's a good memory. It's like Sports, I love sports metaphors. It's like everybody gets to go on the field yeah. and you finally get to play together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that yeah. so and much. And just being here is awesome because we're all oh, together yeah. and we just love it. We're very proud of what we've You should be. Here. You very much should be. And between all four locations, right? Like, Yeah, it's busy, but we all love it. What so a wonderful it's experience. Uh, hold on, let's play this one, that one. Very cool. We can go in one way and out the other way, I think. Sounds good. As long as it's not blocked. Yes. Yeah, we can actually, we'll just stay in this way. So this is where all the hard work comes to fruition. Yes. It gets to go out the door. You're like, I can easily and happily and proudly say that's how it should taste. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it all hangs out here until I pass it on QA, so we've got a back stock. Um, we have pickups uh, like once or twice a week, so it's Friday, so we're ready to go first sure. thing Monday morning. Um, sure. But yeah, the beer's sleeping back here till it's ready to sell. 
bonus question, what's the timeline then once it gets into the can and you approve it? Does that happen within the week, within yeah, the day? We have a two-day um, quality hold. Okay. okay. And that's mostly because the way our system runs, we have to do some enrichment to okay. encourage any contamination growth. Sure. And so we don't want to send it out without knowing that. Yep. So we hold it for two days until we clear it. And then once it's cleared, it either goes out on a truck that same day or on the next pickup. Sure. So we never put Makes anything sense. out before it gets the Amanda seal of approval. <laughs> Do you have your actual stamp? That says no, Amanda? I wish I you did. Should. I should. It'd be a great Christmas present. It's just present. like I send it out on Slack, but <laughs> yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. fun to just be like, good to go. Like I could come back yep, here and yep, just like, yeah. <laughs> it's like your logo, your yeah, brand. Yeah. I love that. All right, last question. Uh, looking towards the future, are there any new trends or technologies you're excited to explore within or outside of the sensory and science of beer? I think just continuing to see the evolution of beer. Yeah. We know that it's a really changing market and we know that you know this product that we have will always be popular in a sense, but we don't know what's coming next. You sure. know, there's been a lot of play in the non-alcoholic field, yeah. um, in, other areas besides beer and sure. we love to explore and we love to experiment so we've dipped our toes into that a little bit yeah. um, we came out with this hop water for dry january it was delicious so it's just a seltzer <laughs> that's infused with hops yep and that was quite an undertaking for us because the rules are so different when there's no alcohol sure and it's it was something fun to play with especially from the science and the quality side it's a new challenge that I had to tackle that I had never gotten to explore. Sure. So exploring things like that, just different beverages and how we can grow all three of our brands sure. um, while continuing to make all of this beer sure. and play around and have fun with it. Yeah, I mean, what else do we have, right? Yeah. Have fun yeah. first and foremost. It's a really good time. Awesome. Well, I know we're very much looking forward to the future, especially for Four Noses. I was so excited when Waterproof came out and I was like, yay, and of course they are. I told you I did the dry January. Yeah. So I had a lot of the different NAs that were coming yep. out. And that alone, right, how cool that it had been coming up through the last few years. And then yeah. this year, there's like everywhere. Yeah, like, and they're getting good. Like, I've so had excited. quite a few that actually taste like beer pretty, now, pretty which good. Which is exciting. Yep. Yeah. the last year, they've done a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. There's a lot of research and effort put into that area. So I think it'll be cool, cool to see what comes out in the next few years. Awesome. Well, like I said, we're really looking forward. Thank you again. Yeah. This has been awesome. Yeah. Like, thank you for taking the time. This is so Thanks cool.